Hi guys, it's the EFI guy here back with another video. Today I am going to be installing the EDL-1 from ECU Master. I'm just going to talk you through the process of installing the different terminals, where they go on the ECU Master connector for the actual EMU black itself, and then go through the setup in the laptop to get the thing up and running. So with that in mind, let's get straight to it. So with the EDL-1, you actually get a pre-terminated cable here. And what you'll notice is that inside the PVC on this cable is an earthing shield and that protects the cables inside from getting any electromagnetic interference. And that's quite important, especially when you're using this for logging and the speeds that it's logging at. You need to make sure that they are precise. So we're going to be terminating that to a chassis ground. And then there's four wires inside. We're only going to be using three, and that's a five volt power source, a signal ground, and the serial transmit cable. The wiring diagrams for all of the ECU Master products can be found on their website. I'm just going to go and get that up and make a note of what connections need to go where. One thing to note with the install is that if you're following the guide on the ECU Master website itself, it will tell you which pins to use depending on the ECU you have. However, you may already be using those pins for something else, which means you might have to splice into that connection. It's quite simple to check though. Just take a look at the guide, take a look at your ECU and make sure that all the pins that you need are free. Another thing to bear in mind is that if you're already using the serial connections for something else on your ECU, you won't be able to use this. And if you're using one of the ADU units from ECU Master, they already have data logging built in. So you don't really need this. And obviously this has Bluetooth to allow you to connect using the ECU Master app. But again, if you've got an ADU unit, you probably won't need to use the app or anything either, as it'll all be built into the display itself. On my EMU Black, I'm not actually using any of the pins that I need on the EMU Black connector. However, what I'm going to do is I am going to crimp one of the terminals onto a larger gauge wire and then crimp this onto that wire. And that means in the future, if I ever want to use those particular pins for anything else like sensors or use the sensor ground for more sensors, etc., then I can do that and I'm not going to have to mess around with this cabling here. So this is the end of the cable and as you can see there, there are some silver wires poking out and that's the actual grounding sheet itself. What we're going to do to get to that is I'm going to score the PVC and just peel that off and I'm going to use a razor blade to do that and then what we're going to do is take the wires and tuck them through the earth sheathing and then we're going to terminate the earth sheathing onto a grounding cable and then we can do whatever we want with the rest of the wires. So once you've basically scored around the sheathing and then pulled it off, we're just going to take the earth cable and just twist them together, remove that out of the way. You'll see there's like a little plastic guard for all of the cables here. So we're just going to pull all of them through that guard like so and we can just cut that off with some scissors and that just leaves us with our cables here. What I've tried to do is leave as much of the grounding sheath as I can. So it does mean that we don't have much cable here to play with, which will make things a little bit trickier, but nothing that we can't deal with. So the colours that we're going to be using for this install are the brown, white and yellow cables. And that's all that the Emu Black needs. Again, make sure to check your install guide for your ECU if you're using a different ECU to the EMU Black, as this could be different. Next, I'm just going to strip the ends off all of these cables. And that's the end stripped off. Next, I'm going to take one of the ECU terminals and just crimp that onto a thicker gauge wire, as I mentioned before.
There we go. And that's a nice, secure crimp. I don't need all of this wire, so I'm just going to trim some, trim it in half. And that just leaves me with this section here, which I can now crimp onto this connector here. For this crimp, I'm going to use this style of open barrel connector. And this just means that there's two securing points on both the cables and I'm not relying on just a single crimp to hold it in place. And then to finish that connector off, I'm just going to run some heat shrink over the end of it. And there we go, that's the finished product. I'm just going to do the same for the rest of the wires that need to be done and I will show you the finished result. So as you can see, that's all of the cables now done. And I've also crimped on the earth cable as well to a little run of wire that I can then put a ring terminal on. I'm now going to get some capped on tape and just wrap some tape around here and that will provide an area for some strain relief. So it's not the neatest finish in the world but I will finish that off by running some heat shrink over that whole lot. So just a quick recap of what I've done. I've crimped some thicker gauge cables onto the actual harness that's provided by ECU Master. What I've done is I have ran some extra length cable for the 5 volt and the sensor grounds. And then what I've done is I've just put a little service loop in and tied that all together with a cable tie. And then on the actual shielding cable itself, I have crimped a ringlet. And I've made sure that's going to fit on where the chassis ground is for all of the power grounds that are on the vehicle already. One thing to bear in mind is that the 5 volt and the sensor ground use a bigger ECU master terminal and the actual serial connection itself only uses one of the smaller ones. And then just tidy everything up with some heat shrink and now we can go fit it in the car. So as you can see I am now in the car itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the terminals into the EMU black connector itself. Then once I've done that, I can hook the battery back up and connect a laptop up to it, make sure it's all working, and I'll show you guys how to set it all up. So I've got all of the wires fitted into the connector, so I'm just going to put the connector back together, and then I'm going to bolt this shield ground up to the chassis ground just there. Okay, so I've just fired up the car and uh, as you can see the lights on the actual EDL-1 themselves aren't turning on which means the device isn't getting power so I am going to have to investigate that. I'll let you guys know what I'm doing and uh, hopefully it's quite an easy fix but it's a little bit annoying that obviously somewhere I've done my wiring wrong. So it didn't take too long to work out what the problem was. It turns out I've actually just put the pins in the connector the wrong way around. It needs to be pin one to ground, two to the serial connection, and then pin four to the five volts. So it's not too much of an issue. It just means that I need to change the connectors that I've put on the end of the wires. Because as I said before, the serial connector uses a smaller terminal than the power and ground connectors. But it just goes to show that no matter what your experience is with these products, sometimes you can quite easily miss something as obvious as that. So now that I've rewired it all and I've actually put it in the correct place, now we can go ahead and take a look and make sure it's working. So here's a moment of truth. We're just gonna turn the key. And as we can see, the device is getting power. Yay. Now that the device is working, let's jump into the laptop settings and I'll show you guys what you need to do on your EMU Black. It's slightly different on the Classic, so make sure you check the installation guide as well to make sure that the instructions you're following are correct for your vehicle. Okay, so once you're in the ECU Master engine management software, what you'll need to do is head on over to the can and serial control section. I'm just gonna click on serial and that will open up a little box down here. I'm just gonna move that 
On the device, you're going to want to select the ECU master logger. And then once that's selected, you can just hit the make tables permanent button. Then finally, what I'm going to do is just go to set data logger time. And that'll do time and date set, as you can see. And then that's it. That's the data logger configured on the laptop. Okay, and I'll just quickly take you through what you're going to need to do on your Android head unit if you want to use the Bluetooth functionality with the data logger. So the first things first is you're going to have to head over to the Play Store and that's going to be different depending on what device you are using. Uh, we're going to search for ECU Master and we're going to choose the EMU-3 and install that. Once that's installed we're just going to click open allow the location, allow the files as well and then I'm just going to click scan for devices so my emu logger wouldn't come up so I just played around with some of the settings and I ticked auto connect and then refresh and as you can see it is now available here I'm just going to pair the device in the bluetooth settings itself and then I will go back to the emu dash app click on scan for devices and then I'm going to choose the emu logger there and then as you can see I'm just going to go through so if I say for example press and hold one of these and choose IAT See it's coming up as 3 degrees, so that appears to be working. I'm just going to do the same for battery voltage. And as I press the throttle, you can see that goes to 100 and back down to 4. So that is working. And it is quite fast actually, it is responding pretty much real time. So I'm quite impressed with that. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed that. As you could see, the install process is pretty straightforward so long as you're following the instructions. I did make a little bit of a mistake there and luckily ECU Master products are pretty good. Uh, if you do wire them up wrong, they do have built-in protection strategies there to protect from over and under voltage situations. If you like this video, let me know. Leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content. There's going to be plenty more footage on this S15. Do not worry about that. I've got lots of different project ideas in my mind. Well, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Oh,